No wildflower has woven its way into our human affections more than the rose or had its genetic versatility exploited to such an extent in the development of new varieties. Currently, uh, the number of rose varieties is somewhere between 30 and 35,000. Even uh, botanists and rosarians have lost count at, at, at this stage. Uh, the downside of this, of course, is that in parts of the world where there are lots of species, the roses hybridise so readily uh, that the classification and identification of roses can be, ex can be extremely difficult. Now, in the wild, there are between 100 and 150 different species, uh, more or less entirely in the Northern Hemisphere, a uh, large number in Asia, 45 in Europe. Uh, in Ireland, the number is about a dozen, uh, of which a handful occur in County Offaly. And of these, uh, the most abundant, the most familiar, and the most beautiful is the dog rose. Now, the dog rose is a weak-stemmed shrub, but you can see that it has no difficulty twining its way up to where uh, it can expose its, its flowers to the best of the light because of these, these vicious thorns that it has. Uh, the more pedantic among you may wish to know that in fact technically these are not thorns at all, they're prickles. Because in botanical terminology a thorn is a modified branch, a modified stem, uh, and a prickle is the result of an outgrowth of the epidermis, of the skin of the stem. Now, if we take a look at the individual flower, you can see, well, they range in colour. This one uh, is pink, but they range in colour in different bushes from white uh, to a deep shade of, what else, rose, uh, which gets paler as the flower goes through its brief life. The flowers only last for three days uh, and they will close in rain and at nightfall. They have a strong perfume but it comes as something of a surprise to learn that they, they produce no nectar. Uh, what uh, entices the pollinator to visit the flower is the abundant, the abundant pollen. So if you look at the structure you can see in, in, in bud uh, the flowers are tightly protected by the somewhat leaf-like sepals here, which reflex immediately as soon as the flower opens. You've got five of them there, reflex backwards. Uh, you've got five heart-shaped petals. There you have the abundant ring of stamens. And if you look at the newly opened flower here, you'll see that when the flower first opens, they are densely clustered around the middle. And as the stamens mature, they move backwards so as to keep themselves clear of the stigmas, which you can see there in the centre. But the most unique distinguishing feature of roses is that the sepals here, the sepals have grown up and around the lower part of the carpels. So that if we were to take a section of the flower now, you would see there you can see, yeah, you can see that the, car, the, 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 the ovaries are down here, rather white in colour, and the styles go up through a very narrow orifice to present the stigmas at the top. You maybe see it better on that half there. There are the ovaries at the base, there are the stigmas, and they, 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 the styles which are joined together into a sort of a fasciated column come up through that narrow, narrow orifice in the very cent centre of the flower. Books could be written about the uses of roses. And the parts that were used mainly were the petals and the, fr the, the fruits. Uh, the petals are profoundly scented. Uh, and it takes, I think, something like the petals of 2,000 roses to produce a, 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 a gram of rose oil. And this was used, oh, in all sorts of things. It was used in jams and preserves. Uh, confections of all sorts. It had wide uses in, uh, in pharmacy, uh, in cosmetics, etc. But I think my uh, favourite culinary tip comes from the great herbalist John Gerard, uh, who tells us that the ripe hips of the rose, which are the fruits familiar to all of us, the ripe hips 
maketh most pleasant meats and banqueting dishes, as tarts and the like. The making whereof I commit to the cunning cook, and teeth to eat them in the rich man's mouth. No flower occurs more frequently in the poetry, lore and legend of the cultures where roses are abundant. For example, in, in Greek mythology, roses were white until stained by the blood of the naked Venus who found herself tangled in a thicket of wild roses as she attempted to rescue her beloved Adonis from the murderous clutches of the jealous god Mars. In biblical tradition, roses in the Garden of Eden had no prickles. Uh, developed them only when our first parents were, were expelled from, from, from the garden. Uh, in, in Islamic lore, roses were white until a drop of the prophet's perspiration fell upon them. And in the Christian tradition, roses are one of the Golgotha flowers. That is, flowers which were white until stained by drops of blood falling from the cross on which the crucified Christ hung. <laughs>